Good day, I'm Stacey Ann Smith and this is your GIS News for May 14. The Portia Simpson Miller administration is pursuing a number of legislative changes in the 2012-2013 parliamentary year to improve Jamaica's business climate. Among them, changes to the Companies Act to make the registration of businesses a simpler process. Industry Investment and Commerce Minister Anthony Hilton says persons who wish to register their businesses will no longer need to visit several agencies. In the super form mm -hmm. in, the, in the company's office will address all of those issues mm -hmm. and allow for what we call a one-stop um, shop. Minister Hilton, who was speaking on JIS's issues and answers, said an effort would also be made to set up a system to help businesses experiencing fiscal problems so that bankruptcy would no longer be the only option. And the government is also pursuing the Secure Transactions Bill, which would address collateral issues that have been stumbling blocks for financing. The Secure Transaction seeks to ensure that mobile collateral or collateral that are movable, um, such as animals and other kinds of um, collateral other than land mm -hmm. and motor car becomes um, part of the, 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 the process for accessing capital. In that same vein, the minister said he would give full support to probate reform, which does not fall within his portfolio, but would help with asset mobilization that can be used for businesses. Government is moving to increase the recycling of plastic bottles as part of efforts to encourage proper disposal and reduce the volume of the non-biodegradable product in the island's dumps. Local research shows that Jamaicans use one million plastic bottles per week, of which less than 5% are collected for recycling. Minister of Local Government and Community Development Noel Arscott says this should improve once the National Plastic Container Separation Program is fully implemented next year. A key mandate of this government is to create a meaningful and holistic respect for the environment by ensuring that we certainly reduce our carbon footprint and improve our profile locally and internationally with respect to proper management of our waste. Plastic separation is one such sustainable initiative. Minister R. Scott was speaking at Friday's launch of the Plastic Container Separation Pilot Project to be run by the National Solid Waste Management Authority, the NSWMA. Three St. Andrew communities have been chosen for the pilot, Karachi, Havendale and Whitfield Town. The project, which began last week, will last for six months in the first instance, but will be moved into other regions, especially schools, where children will be taught how to separate plastic from other solid waste. Justice Minister Senator Mark Golding has reiterated government's commitment to improving the justice system, even in a climate of resource constraints. Senator Golding says improvements may not always require large sums of capital expenditure. But involve brain work, looking at the system that we have, how can we improve it? What are the issues that we can address through legislation? What are the issues that we can address through better organization? And what are the issues that we have to change by a culture change of how we conduct ourselves in the, in the legal system. He was addressing the recent opening of the Balaclava Courthouse in St. Elizabeth. The minister also mentioned the various legislative reforms being pursued to address the backlog of court cases, noting that the rebuilding of the Balaclava Courthouse would improve access. The courthouse, which was built at a cost of $60 million, comprises one courtroom with jury facilities, one petty session courtroom, and two judges' chambers, among other features. And finally, Jamaica Public Service customers can rest assured that their electricity meter readings are accurate following the accreditation of the power company's meter testing facility. The meter testing and calibration center of the JPS has been officially accredited by the Jamaica National Agency for Accreditation, JANAC. This means that the laboratory was evaluated by a team of assessors and has met international accreditation standards. This accreditation provides an opportunity for JPS to improve its relationship with its customers, being now able to accurately test all meters submitted to its laboratory. The minister is encouraging JPS to collaborate with the Office of Utilities Regulations, OUR, and begin to further monitor and test meters in the field. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stacey Ann Smith. Thank you for watching.